Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Stress Management Workshop by Uplift Fitness. Uh, we're going to give everybody just a couple minutes to get on. I know sometimes these things, it takes just a second for people's computers to load up and, and get started. So I'm going to hang out. Yes, this is a giant cup of coffee. It's about the size of my head. That's what I need to get going in the morning sometimes. But if you guys would, I um, have a little bit different setup in here right now. So um, if you can hear me post something in the comments, just give me a thumbs up or something um, just to make sure that that microphone is appropriate volume. I know sometimes it can be a little low uh, when we have it set up a little bit differently. But um, if you have already, you should uh, all of your stuff should pull up on my screen whenever you comment. So I'll be able to see um, through the entire thing. If you have any questions, um, thank you, Jamitha. Um, if you have any questions at all throughout uh, the workshop, um, stop me immediately. So like, don't wait, don't write them down. Don't be like, well, I don't want to interrupt. Like, I promise you there's certainly more people uh, than just you that have a question about something. So if you don't understand something, type it in the comments. Um, if you're not, if you're watching our website, sorry. Uh, however, um, we can pull them up on the screen just like that. Um, so everybody else can see um, and then, yeah, that way we can get your content to you a little bit better. And, um, just before we get started here, I do want to give everybody kind of a heads up why we did this in the first place was, um, really uh, initially this was first just for our educators, um, and Megs and Mason County, uh, just because, you know, we're getting ready to go back to school or I know, uh, we're, we're going back to school, uh, and stuff's a little crazy right now. Uh, a lot of teachers, you're not technologists. Uh, you're, you're not online learning specialists and, and having to learn a new task and try and learn how to do a new thing. Um, it can be somewhat stressful. Uh, it can be very, very difficult. And, and especially in an environment where you're, you're worried about your kids, you don't know if they're really learning what uh, they, they should be or could be had they been with you in the classroom and it's hard to manage. Um, so, and I, I know it looks different for every school, but regardless, it's a new situation and new situations, especially if you've been doing something for 10, 15 years. First of all, thank you for doing that. Um, there's a lot of teachers that made a huge impact on my life um, personally. Um, so just know that we appreciate you guys very, very much. Um, but we also wanted to open this up to everybody else because with, you know, it's election season, which automatically makes our stress levels go way through the roof. Um, everything happening with COVID, if we have small business owners in here, um, you know, these times are certainly a little bit stressful. Um, however, we're going to teach um, everybody here today some steps to make sure that we can handle that in the very best way possible, manage it, reduce it. Um, we have a lot of stuff in here. Uh, and I do want to do a quick little disclaimer. I mean, some of this, and when we get to the very end, really get into the stress reduction strategies, um, some simple tips and tools. They are just that they're simple. And sometimes they seem like no brainers. And when we uh, understand something is a very, very simple concept, it sometimes removes our belief in that. So we, we kind of lose a little bit of faith in it. So we think, oh, well, you know, just what you said, breathe through your nose is going to reduce my actual stress. Like, man, me sitting down breathing for five seconds is not going to make me less stressed at work or whatever. But when we pair some things with um, with some of the other strategies in here, um, I promise you it's it's something that can just boom, take your heart rate down, take your, your nervous system activation down. It can change the hormones and the neurochemistry of your brain so, so quickly. Now, that doesn't mean that the rest of your day may not be stressful. And we're going to get into that, how to build a stress-free day-to-day. Some, again, very simple strategies. It's just a matter of doing them. Um, and sometimes that's the hard part. And we have some things for you at the very end of the workshop. So make sure you watch all the way through. Um, and if you can't, uh, make sure you catch the replay and participate. Um, because at the very end, we have something special for you guys that we want to do um, to support you um, past the live stream today. So obviously we're going to send you a few resources. We're going to follow you up with a few emails. I know you guys have been getting emails ripped out to you through the week. Um, however, we're going to do something um, to make sure you take the knowledge and everything that, that we learned here today. Um, again, nothing crazy, nothing groundbreaking. It may sound a little bit sciencey or fancy, but really it's 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 pretty simple. Uh, it's just a matter of getting everything kind of all in one place so we can understand it and learn it. Um, but after that, we're going to we're going to do some things to make sure you can put that into practice and actually have a big impact um, on your day to day. So I think we have quite a few on here uh, now between YouTube, our website and Facebook. Um, so we're going to give it about another 30 seconds. We're going to get started. I pray I'm not making a slurping noise when I fresh drink a coffee. <laughs> That's my worst nightmare. My wife's great. She hates that so much. So if I 
making you guys cringe. I'm very sorry. <laughs> All right. If you guys are ready, give me a thumbs up in the comments um, and we will get started here. We're going to get going. I'm going to pull up my screen. So I have my screen right here in front of me, which I'm going to share with you in just a second. So if I'm not looking straight at you, I promise I'm not staring out into space. All right. So stress management workshop presented by Uplift Fitness. And we I guess we can call it Gym Geeks Radio because we're in our podcast studio right now. Um, so we're going to teach you guys how to identify and reduce your stress to perform and live better. So without any further ado, a little quick disclaimer, none of the information um, contained in this workshop is to treat any chronic or acute disease or illness. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you have a medical condition, please consult your physician and do not use any information in this workshop to treat or manage a disease. Those of you who know me know that it kills me to say that sometimes, but we have to. So what we are going to learn today is what is stress? So we know what stress feels like. I'm 1000% positive every single one of you in here knows what it feels like to be stressed. But we do we know what stress actually is because you define it. Um, so we're going to do because that's important, because if we don't know what that is, we can't identify it. So um, we have that. And then what causes stress? So we have the psychological, physiological, which is our body and environmental stressors. So we're going to talk about those um, and help you identify those and maybe remove some of them that are unnecessary. Um, and what happens during stress? So how stress, when we have a, a stressor and the coinciding stress response, how it impacts our sleep, weight gain, cognition, mood, hunger, all, uh, all of those things. So, and then the last part, obviously we're going to finish up, teach you some stress reduction strategies. We're going to do two different things. We're going to do short-term stress reduction. So some quick things you can do in the moment. So something's happening right now. And again, we're going to tailor a lot of this stuff. I forgot to say, um, to educators, um, just because like I said, we really want to do something for you guys. Cause we appreciate you so, 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 so much. Um, I know your job goes very underappreciated, underpaid, all that stuff. I wish you got a million dollars a year, um, for what you do because you have such an important job. Um, so we're going to give you something um, very quickly, uh, a quick stress reduction strategy that when stress hits, when something happens, you can take five seconds, even 30 seconds to create that space so that you can make the best decisions possible so that you can perform very, very well and do either your job or life or whatever it is very well and without stress, or at least bring it down to a level where it's very manageable. Because if any of you know, you've ever had something that's really stressful, you had to make a bunch of decisions, whatever, it's really hard. And sometimes we just break down. We don't want that. Uh, we want to be able to perform at our very best level, especially those of you who are doing the very important job of teaching our children. Um, and then we're going to do long-term stress reduction. So we can't just let stress keep you know hitting all the time and trying to use these quick reduction strategies. We want to build a life to where we have so much room for stress to where some of it comes. It's okay. It's managed. Well, you know, some stress is not a bad thing. Uh, I think which is what we have on our next one here. Uh, but we're going to go to uh, some important things to understand. So we're going to have quick and long term stress reduction strategies. So there are three terms um, that I'm going to talk about. I know some of you, if we have biology teachers on here, this is probably going to be a review for you. Um, however, uh, there's going to be three terms that I need you guys to understand because I'm going to use them um, a good bit. And you don't have to understand how they work in every single receptor in the human body. Um, however, uh, we have our insulin, which is number one. So insulin removes nutrients from the bloodstream, namely glucose. We're going to talk about glucose a lot because cortisol, which is the next one, releases glucose when it is elevated. Um, but insulin is very anti-inflammatory. So once released into our body, and some of you may be hearing that and be like, what? I thought it was pro-inflammatory. It's not. It is anti-inflammatory. However, when our tissues are resistant to it, so when you have insulin resistance or diabetes or things of that nature, um, you are going to not get any of the anti-inflammatory benefits because you're body is no longer receptive or receiving um, that insulin. And basically what's happened there is insulin gets released and gets released and released and released. And your body's like, man, I'm already saturated with it. You know, and it kind of tames down the receptors. So it quits accepting it. So you get a little bit of insulin resistance. So it has to release more insulin for the same effect. So it's doubled and then it triples and quadruples. And eventually it's just pouring it out nonstop. And we're not getting any of the, the effects of it. So we're not getting anything good. And that's when we call, what we call insulin resistance, which is reversible, um, contrary to what many people have been told. Um, so insulin 
very anti-inflammatory except when we're resistant and you can't come insulin become insulin resistant from stress which we're going to talk about next and cortisol so cortisol you may have heard is our stress hormone it is our stress hormone it does a lot of things in the body it is is a very strong signaler for a lot of different processes in the body which we're going to get to um, but it releases glucose into the bloodstream so when cortisol elevates it is going to elevate in accordance with our stress response. So if we're really, really stressed, all of a sudden we're getting a ton of cortisol, which means it's gonna dump a ton of glucose into our bloodstream. Now, real quickly, why would it do that? Well, if we see a lion at the watering hole, we're gonna get freaked out. We're gonna get stressed, right? We're gonna panic and it's gonna jack up our cortisol. Glucose is gonna be in our bloodstream, which means we're gonna have a lot of fuel to run away. So it's really good for our survival. Now, if there's a small stressor, it's just a small amount of glucose. That's where most people are. Now, if you're obviously getting super high stressful jobs all the time, whatever, uh, but most, most of us have these small stressors all day long. We just have this constant stream of glucose into our bloodstream which means then insulin is co constantly fighting that, is constantly being elevated. So stress raising our blood sugar, which raises our insulin. So chronic stress means chronic insulin, means, means insulin resistance, or at the le very least, it contributes to it. So if you guys understand that again, give me a thumbs up. I definitely need reassurance here because uh, one of the things I hate is is teaching a, teaching a workshop or a class or, or you know speaking somewhere and we get two slides in and we lost the crowd. So if I need, again, if I need to review guys, drop a comment, say, stop. Hey, dummy, nobody knows what you're talking about. Go back over it or we'll skip over. It. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings, I promise. And you're not going to look dumb. Um, and the last thing very quickly, um, everything that we look at is called is through what's called the evolutionary perspective. So all modern disease is the result of the dissociation of our current environment and our genetics. So our genes evolved over thousands and thousands of years. If you look at it like a football field, it's like from the one to the 99 yard line and it looked exactly the same. So we were we were evolved and designed to thrive and survive in a very specific environment. And our genetics and our genes take a very, 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 very long time to be able to change. But what happened is we just have this very, very consistent environment and our genetics, everything thrive and survive in that environment. So in, and when you get into evolutionary biology, it is just mind blowing how many times this, this perspective comes up. But what has happened is our environment went from, you know, pretty much exactly the same until about the 18, 18, 1850, even 1900s. And then boom, the difference between now and what you would think of in medieval times of the 1900s, and you look at all of human history, I mean, it, we're at the 99.9 .9 yard line at World War II, and the difference between now and then is massive, how, what we eat, how our day-to-day -day looks, so many things, and our genes just simply aren't designed for that. So we're designed to thrive and survive in a different environment, and what happens is that dissociation, our body is trying to save us, but what it's really manifesting as in modern times is disease. So that is important to understand. And one last thing before we go on, stress isn't a bad thing, there is good stress and bad stress, you know, good stress we call, um, you know, something that provides us as a benefit. So exercise stresses our body, but obviously it's good. It gives us a benefit on the other side of that stress versus just somebody screaming at you on the street. It doesn't provide us with any benefit and it just raises our stress levels for no reason. So that is really kind of what we call bad stress, but it's the same. Stress is stress, whether it's good stress or bad stress, we're going to need to understand that um, going forward. And one real quick thing, um, cortisol is uh, inversely related with melatonin. So melatonin is what puts us to sleep when cortisol is elevated. Uh, melatonin is down. When cortisol is down, melatonin can go up. Um, when you get up in the morning, you should have cortisol super, super high. It should get you up, get you going. Glucose gets in your bloodstream. You're ready to go for your day. If you don't feel like that, either you had really bad sleep or uh, you are have some cortisol issues because you hit your snooze alarm all the time. So that can train your body to turn it off whenever you get up. So uh, let's move forward here. So we're going to go over very quickly. What is stress? So number one, stress is anything other than homeostasis, which just basically means anything other than normal. So our body likes efficiency because efficiency uh, costs less resources, aka it's easier for us to run with less food, less work, all those things. And again, looking thousands of years ago, that would make sense. Obviously, now we can grab a snack cake from the fridge or we can get food pretty much anywhere, but that hasn't always been the case. So um, being in a new environment is a good example. So classrooms look really different like right now work life probably looks a little bit different right now that's one of the reasons why it's stressful because our brain likes efficiency it likes the same things because then it doesn't have to you know take in every little thing in the environment all the time if you ever notice um you know kind of when you're in a new space it you're looking around you're noticing things and before you kind of and afterwards you have your blinders on you can't really see those things and that's like if you go go to buy coffee 
you know, you, you're just on your way to work and you, you want to grab a coffee and you see some coffee beans sitting there. You're not going to sit and go, I wonder how they farmed this. I wonder where this came from. Oh, is this glue or is this a tie? What, how is this bag closed? What, I wonder what they used to dye this bag, but your brain would explode. If you did that with every single decision throughout the day, then it would just go crazy. But it, it turns off certain things, just like when you're driving, it turns certain things off. And it only wants you to pay attention to what you need to pay attention to, to thrive and survive or get through your day. Um, so when things are different, it is stressful on the body, stressful on the mind, takes up a lot of your mental space, which, you know, and again, for the teachers and the kids, both, it's going to be kind of hard um, coming back, just being in a little bit of a new environment. But I promise you, it will get better as we get used to that. It'll take two to three weeks, um, hopefully. And those things will get better. Um, another thing, um, being not being in homeostasis, having too low of calories. So if we're not feeding our body enough or if we don't have the proper nutrients, um, especially, again, talking about cognition, um, choline, a lot of things you get from from red meat and eggs, that is going to be your your best friend through this. It can really help you manage your stress um, and especially on the cognitive side. Um, but having too low of calories means to the body that you're not thriving or surviving, you're starving. So when we, if you ever hear us at Uplift Fitness, we usually talk about this more and weight loss and long-term weight loss and things of that nature. But having too low of calories is the worst thing that you can do because it one it slows down your metabolism, which means that you're not going to lose weight anymore. Um, and two, it's a stressor on the body. So it's actually going to drive weight gain because again, releasing glucose in the blood, raising insulin, all that stuff. So when your food comes in, it's going to go straight to our fat cells rather than where it needs to go. So too low of calories is a bad thing. Um, and again, it's a stressor on the body because, um, you know, it gets us outside of homeostasis. So stress is also anything uncomfortable or inefficient, which we talked about. Learning a new task is inefficient because we don't know how to do it. It's hard. So learning new things is stressful on the body. You guys have probably figured that out now, uh, being back to school in the last two weeks, trying to figure out how, um, you know, things are going to go. Um, so that's probably very difficult. Um, and the talk about the students. Uh, this is a good one, like being made fun of. Why is that stressful on the body? Obviously, it hurts us emotionally. Um, but it's, it's this kind of the, the thing we're are, uh, talking about survival. It's always best for us to have a tribe as humans. So if you look at one human alone in the woods, it's very, very easy to kill. So our body has figured out, hey, when I make friends with more humans, my chances of survival goes way up because 10 humans in the woods is a very scary thing, um, especially because we probably burn it down and chop down all the trees and use it to build stuff. <laughs> uh, but being made fun of something like that, that's why that is a, such a big stressor because our chances of survival plummet in that case, or at least that's what our genetics are thinking. Anything threatening, obviously, is very, very stressful. So if it makes it harder to thrive or survive, our body views it as a stress. Again, low calorie diets, one of those things. Or if a lion is chasing you and it wants to eat you, your body is going to jack up your stress response. Um, and then the next thing is the stress response. Um, this is what we call stress, um, but it's what we feel. So the hormonal changes, the changes in mood and awareness, um, those are, that's the actual stress response. So um, we get the, the stressor, which is the, anything outside of homeostasis, uncomfortable, inefficient. Um, and a, a quick note on number two that I kind of skipped over right there um, is that anything uncomfortable or inefficient, we're going to seek out comfort. Our body wants us to do something comfortable to get away from that because it doesn't like stress. So discomfort is something that it, it will drive us, whether that's through uh, any different thing, food, alcohol, you know, watching a movie, not doing a task, whatever. There's all kinds of things that our body will drive us towards that um, because it wants us to seek out comfort because that is the best thing for our survival, not doing things that's uncomfortable or inefficient, even though long term, it may be the worst possible thing for us, especially if we keep doing that. Um, so um, last thing on number four, changes of mood and awareness. Sympathetic arousal of our nervous system is a big thing because we're going to touch on that. Um, so basically you have your parasympathetic and your sympathetic. You, it's more of a spectrum. It's not like an on or an off or one or the other. It's more of a spectrum somewhere in there. The sympathetic nervous system can be somewhat elevated or somewhat down. Um, but again, stress response can be small. It can be medium. It can be huge. And our, our arousal of our nervous system is going to coincide with that. Um, so that's going to be important. And the last thing here, the feedback loop. So psychological and physiological feedback loops. Um, that is basically 
and it, it's, it's some of those things that can get super confusing really quick. Um, but it's basically the psychological stuff, stuff going on in your brain, the neurochemistry in your brain, all of those things. Um, it is going to send a feedback loop and make you feel a certain way. And conversely, you can do certain actions. Your body can just feel a certain way and it will change the way that you think. It kind of comes back upstairs. So there's this loop and it's constantly going and it's gathering information and seeing what it needs to do again to thrive and survive. But we can hack it. We can change it. We're going to talk about that. Um, again, if you take a deep breath, that is a physical action of getting more oxygen in our body and we're actually accumulating carbon dioxide is what's happening there um, to to drive that down however that changes our thinking it changes our brain um, for a very number of reasons and if you smile so if we all sit right here and we smile at our screen for 45 seconds all of a sudden we're gonna feel happy we're gonna feel excited uh, and what is that it's a feedback loop so those are going to be a little bit important to understand so we're going to look through a few causes of stress um, this is the big one we need to kind of take mental note of these so mentally, we're going to go through those first. Too many tasks, feeling overwhelmed. If you have too many tasks going on, your body is not going to feel like it can thrive and survive. So it's going to see this as a stressor. Um, now, obviously, again, teachers, you guys have a lot going on. You have a lot in a lot of different uh, arenas. You know, as a as a male, we have the waffle brain. Sometimes it's really easy for us to compartmentalize those things. Our females, not so much. You have what's called the spaghetti brain. Everything mixes together. When you have a lot of tasks going on, you get very overwhelmed. And it causes you to not be able to do maybe the one that is right in front of you. Um, so understanding that going forward is going to be important. New environment or learning a new task. The brain wants efficiency. Um, so we, we talked about that already. High levels of emotion. So this is one, again, I know a lot of you are, are thinking about some of your kids at home and you're like, man, they, maybe they don't come from the best home situation or, or they got a lot going on. And, and I don't know how well they're going to be able to do uh, at home or online learning. And maybe you're a little bit worried um, about that or, or you just see them you're kind of struggling because they're a little scared and they're wearing whatever it is. Um, that emotion is also a stressor. And why it is, is we evolved with emotions, again, to help us survive. Uh, because of the, the whole tribe to survive thing. But when this system is overly taxed or overrun, it presents itself as stress. So just a quick to kind of clear that up real fast, feeling pain for others, tribe to survive. So when you feel pain for the kids, um, and then there's also love. So feeling love for people um, helps us survive because that drives procreation. Um, and then fear, fear helps us to escape danger in certain situations. But when it's in the wrong place, it causes a lot of stress and it's an issue. Um, anxiety is something I do want to talk about very quickly. Um, anxiety, is perceived danger to avoid danger in the first place um, and that and again that's going to be size of the trauma is going to determine the size of the anxiety so what that means is if i go see that lion every saturday morning we get up and we have to go down to the watering hole to get a drink and fill up our buckets or whatever it is and every time we go down there that lion is there and our body thinks hey you got away once. You better quit testing your chances. It's been five times now. He's there every single time. And every time you go, we go, oh my gosh, we get stressed. We freak out. Now that doesn't have to be a lion. That can be a parent yelling at you or uh, any number of things or a boss yelling at you. Every time you come to a meeting or every time you do what, this one thing wrong, um, our employees at Uplift Fitness in the future will probably have anxiety about mopping wrong because I will be the mop Nazi. Uh, but and if the, if the, activity is constantly met with a stressor, it starts to breed anxiety. And that's a good thing in terms of survival because it tells our body, hey, don't go to the watering hole. You know, and then we start to feel stressed. So we all we had to do is think about the watering hole, think about that thing, that activity, that action, that environment that we're in that causes stress. And then it causes stress and makes us avoid it. Again, we won't get eaten by the lion, but in modern times, it means we may not go to work. We may not go to school. We may not make a phone call because we're scared because we think that something is threatening towards us, which again, our evolution or our body is telling us that for a reason. It's trying to help us survive, but in the modern context, it usually doesn't play out very well. And the size of the anxiety. So you can have just a little bit of anxiety. I have a little bit of anxiety answering phone calls from you know uh, being yelled out on the phone when I was 16, 17. You know, I mean, but it, but it doesn't halt my entire day. But if you have something that is severely traumatic, something that is very, very uh, impactful and a huge stress, something a trauma when you think about going in that environment that situation the anxiety is going to match that stressor so um, i just wanted you guys to be able to understand that as well but let's that's all the mental stuff too many tasks new environment new learning levels of emotion um, whether that's pain love fear anxiety those are all can be stressors um, physical lack of sleep 
obviously as a stressor if our body's not prepared um it is going to be a stressor there's a lot of things that happen with cortisol and insulin there um a low calorie diet we talked about pro-inflammatory diets so low level inflammation um constantly chronically causes brain fog um which makes the need for stimulants which drives our cortisol up and thus we have to or, or we're feeling stressed that way uh, and then lack of sleep, um, excited breathing patterns. So these short breathing patterns, we're really going to go over that here in a second. And we're going to come back to that last stimulus, caffeine, sympathetic arousal. My giant cup of coffee right here is just a big giant cup of stress. And then, uh, yes, breathing patterns, range of motion. Um, exercise, good stress versus bad stress. It is a good stress. And we're going to talk about why it is the best good stress. Obviously the guy that owns the gym is going to tell you to exercise, but there's other things that we can do too. So if you guys can't, you know, you're not going to turn into a gym rat overnight. We understand that we're going to help you, um, regardless. Um, now, and then environmental perceived threats. Um, so the, anything that threatens your ability to produce, thrive and survive, um, you know, if you think like, I'm going to lose my job because of COVID, obviously that's a perceived threat because you think you very quickly can associate, uh, oh, I lost my, I lose my job. I can't put food on the table. I starve. And that is not good for thriving and surviving. So we make those associations um, very, very quick. So any perceived there, anything that we look to the future and we think about, and we're like, oh my gosh, how could this turn out? And we're going to teach you again here in a second why that may not be the best idea to do that all the time. And the big one, um, airborne toxins is another one. Um, so if you have mold stuff in your house, that can cause inflammation, things that actually drive your stress levels way up um, and actually hurt the systems and the receptors in your body that deal with stress. So um, kind of you get it from both ends. And then blue light. So we want to talk about this and then we're going to do breathing patterns. We're going to move on. Blue lines is or blue light is the dissociation again between environment and genetics. So blue light typically came from the sun only. I know you guys heard about blue light from our screens and stuff. This is why that is an issue and why it is a stressor. So in the morning, the sun is kind of that orangey yellow color. Um, and that means, you know, to our body, it's time to slowly start to wake up that just a little bit of blue light that comes through there. It hits our eyelids, even through our eyelids into our eyeballs. And historically, that would wake us up in the morning, which would our body says, hey, cortisol needs to go up so you can get up out of bed and we can start our day so we can go thrive and survive. And then when it passes overhead around noon, you know, through midday, it's very bright blue light and it tells our body, be awake, be awake, be awake. It's time to be awake. That is the signal that we got for thousands and thousands of years with that blue light. When it can't started to come down and it turned to more red or amber, we started to kind of come down and relax. Our cortisol levels started to drop, our melatonin started to rise, started to kind of fall asleep. And then at nighttime, that blue light was gone completely. And if what light we did have was fire again, which was red, amber lights, um, those wavelengths. So our body evolved, our sleep patterns, our circadian rhythm were really around that blue, uh, around that blue light. Now, we have it all the time. We wake up in the morning, we flip on a light. It's a bright blue light, like it's noon and we need to be up and awake 24 seven. And then at nighttime, we have these screens, we have our lights, we have our phones and then our body is just like cortisol. High, 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 high. You got to be awake. The sun is up, but really it's not, it's not up for 18, 19 hours a day. And what happens is our melatonin never gets a chance to rise because we have this low level cortisol. Plus it's for stress. It's already high to begin with, but this small little stressor. So blue light blocking glasses or turn off your freaking screens. That is your solution. You have to do that. That is absolutely non-negotiable. Um, you know, you have to limit screen time before bed at least two hours or get yourself a really good pair of blue light blocking glasses from a company called Blue Blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X. I'm not associated with them, but they're really, really good. They're hundred bucks. Best investment you will make in your sleep. I promise you, you sleep really well. Um, so that is blue light. And the last thing we're going to talk about breathing patterns really quick. So we talked about the feedback loops. Um, so again, feedback loop being our breathing patterns. If we smile, things that we think about can obviously cause changes downstairs. Um, what uh, we don't think about is, is I, I work with uh, clients all the time uh, with joint pain, things of that nature. And really, um, that's just lack of range of motion and strength around their joints. Now, what we usually do then is we want to activate those muscles. We want to get them moving. And what's happened is over time, they quit using those muscles so much. Um, that their body just kind of locks it up because there's no need for it um, or the muscles around it atrophy because they never get used and thus that joint it loses its range of motion our breathing our muscles are our, our brief breathing is controlled by our muscles so we have a lot of things you know around the you know, obviously the diaphragm but there's also muscles on the ribs and the ribs are your joints for breathing because they're the ones that open up and contract now when they never move guess what they're going to be really tight all the time or if we have excess weight on coming from the outside kind of pushing those in it's going to cause our breathing pattern 
to be to be a little bit shorter, shorter and choppier, not these big, long, deep breaths that really help us to breathe well and drive down stress. So just be, you know, maybe having a couple extra pounds on or just never exercising, getting into that big range of motion because you you have to breathe heavy. You know, if you don't train that or you, you know, you just you, know, you never uh, uh, do anything that's going to cause uh, uh, that rib cage to expand. Your breathing pattern is going to be small and short and choppy. Now, what that is, it's a feedback loop to our brain, to our nervous system, which means excited, sympathetic arousal, which is going to be a, just literally a low level stressor straight from our breathing. Um, and again, why that is, is because if we're breathing short and choppy, it usually means that we're running away from something. So we need to be stressed and our body recognizes that. So it drives those stress levels up just a little bit. Um, so and that's why, again, conversely, why controlling our breathing um, is very, very important. So we're going to move on because we're going to talk about breathing a lot. Um, so what happens in response to stress? We talked about cortisol and blood sugar dumps into the bloodstream. And if you're felt shaky after you get really stressed, this is why your blood sugars came down because it all dumped into your body to deal with that stress. Usually that happens with really high le levels of stress or adrenaline. In that case, adrenaline freaking dumps at all so we can get away really quick. Um, and then this is something, um, you know, I, I've taken a course um, over the summer that was mind blowing. It's called muscle centric medicine. Um, and we really looked at muscle as your ability to absorb and handle glucose. So um, it's, you know, it was called your metabolic sink. Um, and what that means is that it's this giant sponge that absorbs all this glucose and it can also wring it out. Well, here's the thing. You have more muscle, you have more ability to handle glucose. So stress from that cortisol and things of that nature aren't going to affect you as much. And you also have more ability to store. So if you do have a really big stressor, your body can handle a lot better. That is literally a structural mechanism, mechanism built into our body that helps us prevent um, stress that helps us handle our stress. Um, so minor stress won't clean out our entire glucose store. Um, and then after that, you know, our nervous system is stimulated. Our respiration rate increases. Cognitive function goes down because we don't need to think really hard, make a lot of really important complex decisions when we're running from the lion or we're approaching the lion. We get that little bit of low level stress, which is what we all deal with every day, every single day. We're going to illustrate that in a second. It's going to blow your mind. Um, so Teachers, decision-making ability, um, your ability to teach sometimes, and you know, that is going to go down as our stress goes down. Sorry, I bumped my microphone there. Um, biochemical changes in the brain. So we get, like I said, we seek out comfort when we get stressed. Um, our body rearranges the literal structure inside of our brain. And you talk about doing that chronically, the receptors in our brain even start to grow more in favor of sugar, of alcohol, of of other substances, things like that. Um, so we get cravings for dopamine, whatever form that comes in, but your body's like, give me dopamine, make this stress go down, make it go away, seek out comfort. And usually that would come in the form of food thousands of thousands of years ago. Today, it can be any number of things. It can be food. And many, 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 many cases it is, but our food today doesn't look like it did then. And back then it wasn't an issue because we didn't have the kind of food and crap uh, on our shelves and in our cupboards, um, like we, like we did back then. So, uh, if you feel stressed and you all of a sudden have a craving for sugar or a craving for alcohol, or you want to get on your phone, I'm going to touch on that very quickly. Um, that's your body saying, you know, get this stress off of me. And then the technology piece, um, whenever we are, are trying to focus, we're trying to write something. If you ever notice, you get a little bit of the writer's block and then you grab your phone and it just, you don't even think about it. You just, you grab it, you scroll and you put it down and you go back. And then that, that may happen on repeat constantly. What that is, their, their body is uncomfortable because it takes effort to think through this issue. So it wants comfort. It wants that dopamine hit. And we have it next to us in our pocket or on our desk all day, all the time. And so if you've ever noticed that you just turn your phone off, put it in the other room, how much better and clearer you can think and perform a task? That's why. Because it doesn't have that immediate thing right next to it. Um, at least not that readily available. So you feel it and you can avoid it because it's just a very small signal to, to seek out that dopamine. Digestion. Number four, digestion is impaired. So inability to digest food um, is not, or your digestion is not a priority when you're running from a lion. That's why if you ever hear people get really scared and they poop their pants, <laughs> that's why. Uh, because that's not an issue. We don't care about what's going on down there. We want to get away from that lion so we don't get eaten. Um, and then high inflammatory environments, um, which is going to be you know, your diet, your omega-6 fatty acids, all these industrial seed oils and high amounts of sugar. And on the other side, being insulin and cortisol resistant because we have cortisol, we stress all the time, or insulin's high all the time because of our diet and because of stress. 
and then inflammation never comes down. That's going to be an issue and it's going to cause a feedback loop to further drive stress, which again is an issue. And the main thing with that with the gut is our second brain. If you haven't heard that, your stomach is your second brain, the bacteria, all the things going on in our stomach. That is the number one place other than our eyeballs and our ears that we get information from our environment the things that we eat, things that are going in our body. Tell Our body's very, very smart. It tells it a lot of things and it gives it feedbacks uh, it feeds back up to our brain. So if you heard the vagus nerve, um, you know, that, that, that gut feeling, that's what it is. There's a very, very intelligent system in our intestines, in our gut. And when that isn't inflamed, it goes straight to the brain. The brain becomes inflamed and we get brain fog and it's very, very difficult. If you ever hear people that um, do fasting every once in a while, um, they, they say, you know, it's because I think so much better. I'm so clear in the morning. That's what it is. That inflammation, we don't put that junk in our body. You could just not put junk in your body. But those things don't go into our body and we don't have issues there. Um, and then also free radical production, which I'm not going to get into that a lot. Um, but basically you get a negative damaging immune response excuse me. Uh, and then uh, if insulin or cortisol resistant, that could be very, very damaging because you don't have these things to go in these anti-inflammatory things. And those cytokines just kind of go crazy and they damage your body. Um, and that's why you see people who get tissue damage um, um, with uh, diabetes and stuff like that. Um, or if you see people who are just very, very stressed all the time and, and they ache and whatever, that's what it is. It's, it's driving that, that free radical production because your body thinks it needs to fight off of the threat. Um, it's a very bad thing. So next, long-term stress impacts. We have just a couple more here. Um, insulin resistance, we talked about heart disease, type 2 diabetes, type 3 diabetes, which what is type 3 diabetes? That's Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is type 3 diabetes is driven directly by insulin, things of that nature, and the amyloid plaque and stuff like that. It all comes from this. Um, and I can, we, you guys, we don't have enough time to talk about that. If you want to talk about that later, we're doing a different workshop. High blood pressure, uh, direct result of insulin resistance because a lot of things with the immune response can't um, allow those things to relax. And obviously, if you're stressed all the time, your body's going to be tight all the time, um, and that's going to cause issues there. Chronic pain, um, so the inability to use our stress hormones um, to um, to be able to fight that anti-inflammatory thing going on there. Um, when we get that resistance, it's going to be an issue. Cortisol resistance, um, stress will seem worse and worse because uh, the, the cortisol is going so, so high because we're resistant to it. And that some tissues get saturated, other things like our brain, not as much. It doesn't become as resistant. It still responds. So if our tissues aren't responding, we're getting a ton of cortisol to try and get them to respond. Our brain doesn't sense that's going on. It goes, holy crap, what's going on? So when you're, when you're stressed all the time, a little stressor becomes a huge stressor. Um, and then poor sleep. We talked about cortisol and melatonin being inversely related and sunlight and cortisol. Um, so if you feel groggy upon waking up, um, I mentioned this earlier, um, and if you hit snooze all the time. So what happens is you have this one signal to wake up in the morning. It's cortisol. And usually, again, blue light comes in, but we have an alarm or whatever. Um, that's why if you wake up naturally, you feel so good, full of energy because your body's natural system kicks in and we wake up how we're supposed to every single day. Um, I understand that doesn't happen all the time. Um, now, uh, the reason why you feel groggy is because that system gets dysregulated because we hit snooze and it only happens once and eventually your body adapts and realizes, like, man, I'm messing this up. I got to figure something else out. So I'm just not going to raise cortisol in the morning because that's expensive to make. Um, and then stress becomes normal. This is the kind of end game here is being sick and stressed. Um, becomes your homeostasis. And you that's just what you feel. You don't even realize, I guarantee 90% of us watching right now, um, stress is your normal. And you don't realize how stressed your body is. If you're going on vacation and you come back and you're like, man, I feel like a different person. And then it hits you really hard. Maybe it's because you're playing catch up, but it's more likely that you finally got four or five days of low cortisol levels and you realize what that feels like. And it was just bliss and relaxing. And now the contrast of your day to day, instead of your normal plus a little bit extra stress from your day to day, you're down here and you feel that when you come back to your day to day, when you're relaxed and it, and it doesn't feel very great. Um, good adaptation for survival, but not for your health. That is not a good thing for your health. So if you're in a situation where you need that, that's a good thing. Um, again, evolutionarily, that would look very, very different. Um, but I want to go through really quick before we move on the typical American day to day. Now that we know all these stressors, all these things, how they work, um, and again, guys, shoot me a thumbs up if you're kind of following along here. And again, if you have questions, stop me, drop them in the comments. I will further explain what you probably like. No, dude, I want you to freaking talk anymore. You're running like crazy as it begins. 
All right, so typical American day to day. No sleep. So we're tired. Let's just start there. We wake up, we don't sleep very well. None of us sleep very well. Breathing patterns, all that stuff is jacked up. And then we wake up and then we have like me, a size of a cup of coffee bigger than your head. I usually don't drink this, by the way. I just really like this cup. Um, you know, all these stimulants, sympathetic arousal. So we start baseline, we have no sleep. So our cortisol's up. Um, and then our stimulants, it goes up. We have breakfast or we skip breakfast, which makes it continue to rise. It never knocks it back down. We eat a low calorie diet, which is stressful chronically all the time. So it makes that stress go up. We rush to work or we drop the kids off um, or we listen to the news on the way to work. And oh my gosh, stress, stress, stress. And then we get that midday slump. We're really tired. We eat this you know, meal, get this massive insulin dump. And we're like, oh my gosh. And then our you know, that, that insulin bomb for lunch, again, causing resistance chronically, it's going to cause issues, um, which stresses us out because it was like, oh my gosh, I got this work to do. I'm tired. This is rough. And then we get a little bit sad. Um, and then it's like, oh, we get, get through the, get through the day. Uh, we rush to the gym. Not typically most people don't, um, or we rush to home, do our chores or we had to get the grocery store, stress, stress, stress. Um, but if you do rush to the gym, take your pre-workout, all that crap, get it in there. You're sympathetic arousal goes way way up so just all day we're climbing 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 we're not even done yet we have this crazy hard workout bad idea for most people um we rush home to get ready for the next day and we're stressed and we have our phone in because we just want to relax and we just want to look at our phone and watch tv and not do anything for a little while and then that blue light's coming in and that cortisol has just climbed all day long and then we get in bed and we're like why can't i sleep i wonder why and then we don't sleep well and then we repeat we do that every day. Then we get cortisol resistance. We get insulin resistance. We get chronic pain. We get stress becoming our new normal. We feel tired. We can't make decisions. It's an issue. And then we have to break this cycle. So living a stress-free life. So we're going to talk about how that can happen. And then we're going to give you some strategies as we wrap up here. So stress removal, reduction, and management. So um, removing unnecessary stress. So if you have de decision fatigue, if you've ever heard that Steve Jobs wore the same uh, shirt every single day is because he had a lot of decisions to make and that was one less that he could make. So removing decisions, um, you know, making a lot of executive decisions, things that require our thinking, um, like in the morning, sometimes what clothes to wear is a stressor on the body. So when we have too many, we get overwhelmed. That's an issue. And again, women, you are a little bit more prone to this. If your husband is forgetting something or doesn't remember something all the time because he's got a lot going on because he's got that waffle brain. Um, but you guys, unfortunately, it all melds together and you get this overwhelming feeling a little bit more. Um, but decision fatigue. So knocking out some of those decisions, making them the day before, um, however you can do that goes into preparation. Um, you don't know where to start on your to-do list. Um, that is a big thing, but just knock out the bottom three, the things that you can do the quickest. So when I have these giant to-do lists that I freaking make for myself all the time, uh, every day when I go to work, I make this huge to-do list that I know I'm not going to get done. Or for you, you don't work for yourself and your boss gives it to you. It's so wonderful, isn't it? Um, and you, you're like, man, what, where do I even get started? You get the decision fatigue, you get that initial stress. Knock out three things that you can do in five minutes or 15 minutes or less. Pick them out, get the ball rolling, and then all of a sudden that stress just shrunk or that, that list of stress just shrunk by 30%. And you're like, I feel a little bit better now because I know I'm going to do that after lunch and that after lunch and the rest of the stuff I have a couple hours now to do. Um, so knock out things that you can do quickly and easily without a lot of stress. Um, there are a lot, not a lot of thinking. And then we have to have uh, foundational habits that remove our daily tasks uh, or sources of stress, like preparing our meals before we go, whatever that looks like, filling up a water bottle, packing your bag, um, and then to removing all these unnecessary decisions, stressors, things that we have to think about through the day, give us as much space as possible to do our job, do what we need to do. Um, and then our victim mentality. So this is a huge one. Um, and then right here, the little cup, we're going to talk about stress. Um, this is your ability to handle stress. This is the amount of stress that you have. Removing unnecessary stress drops it down to here. And then you have more room in your cup to be able to handle more stress in the future. And we're also going to talk about not only driving your stress levels down so you have a more room in your cup, but getting a bigger cup to begin with. We talked about it a little bit, kind of handed out earlier. Victim mentality. If everything is happening to you, uh, then everything is an attack on you, which means everything is a stressor. So when we believe the world, either the world revolves around us or that everything bad that happens is a direct assault on us. I have been guilty of this before. So I promise I'm not being preachy or saying that you're bad or wrong or dumb. But this victim mentality, thinking that this whole world, everything bad that happens to us is happening directly to us. Like, man, there's a lot of stuff going on in the real world. 
I love y'all, but you're not that important to the entire world to focus its uh, its efforts on assaulting your day to day. Things just happen. And we have to ha- kind of have that attitude. But like, you know what? It's happening. Whatever. We're going to do something about it. Um, but don't believe the lie that every bad thing that happens is an assault on you, even though it does feel that way sometimes. I know it feels that way. Absolutely. But the world is too busy, has too much going on to, to worry about your day to day, however significant it is. And again, appreciate it. But It is not the truth sometimes. And then uh, we got two things here. So mindset, if you don't take ownership or responsibility, that means that your situation is not in your control. Now, we'd want to push off ownership and responsibility because that's uncomfortable. It's going to cause us to work, things of that nature. But if you don't take ownership or responsibility, that means it isn't in your control. And when something isn't in our control, then it's uncertain. And uncertainty is the ultimate source of stress. When COVID hit, everybody was uncertain everybody was uncertain. Everybody was stressed. People that had a ton of money, people who didn't, people who kept their job, people who didn't, everybody was uncertain. It wasn't that we were, uh, you know, let alone the fear mongering and stuff about, about COVID, but it wasn't mostly that we were worried about getting sick and dying. It's like, what's going to happen to my day to day? How is this going to get disrupted? So if you don't take ownership or responsibility for things, um, regardless, and, and I was talking about this with my wife last night, um, uh, not to her, but we were just talking about the topic. Um, taking ownership and responsibility for things that aren't your aren't your responsibility or whatever. Saying, you know, hey, that affects me, but I'm going to change it. Um, you know, that gives you the ability to control the outcome. Um, so there's a difference between responsibility and fault. Just because you take responsibility doesn't mean that it's your fault. So when people hear like, I'm not going to take, it's not my fault. I'm not going to take responsibility for that. That does, That's not what that means. It just means that you're going to control the outcome or at least affect it the best that you can and be okay with that and know that you changed it positively or, or in your favor, however you need it to. Um, so we always say, you know, don't take responsibility for things that you can't really control. So if you can't have an effect on something, don't try to control it. So like, you know, whatever is going on politically and stuff like this is way up there and out of our control. We can't do anything about that. And again, that's why it's so stressful is because we're just like, what is going to happen to us? You know, it, it's uncertain. There are things in your day to day that you can control that you probably care about much, much more. Um, so don't don't uh, freak out about things that are or try and worry about taking responsibility for something that you can't control, especially if you haven't, you know, kind of sat down and looked to what what it may take to actually do that. Um, But when you take ownership and responsibility, you get the freedom to influence the outcome. That's a big thing. But taking responsibility is not easy all the time. And mostly it's easier not to. And this is where a support system becomes your safety net, which is really important because you're human and you will fail. Guaranteed it 100%. It may be today. It may be every day after it. It may be once next week, but you're going to fail and you need to prepare for it. Have a safety net so that you can have a sound mind. And here's the thing. If you want to prepare your safety net after you failed when you're stressed, you're not going to be able to. Probably not going to want to because you're going to be ashamed that you failed. That's a stupid thing. Don't do that. Don't be ashamed that you failed because you're human. It just means that you're human. Um, but you need to set up that safety net. Now we're going to help you do that at the end of the workshop. Um, but having that, that, that support system for whatever it looks like, this is what I'm personally working on right now more than anything um, because I have a lot of quote unquote failures throughout my every single day and having something to fall back on to where I just bounce back. I hit that safety net. We come right back and we get back to work and we knock out some decisions and to do so our stress goes down. Um, so safety net is important. Take responsibility and ownership for things that stress you out that you want to change, that you wish they would change. You can do that. Um, so having that that response. And then once you've made that, that change and that influence, you can know that you did your best job and be okay with that. And that, that's a tough thing to do, but it is very important. It can go a long way in reducing your stress. Because if you're thinking, especially again, teachers, you're like, oh my gosh, so much is going on. It's like you have the ability to affect their day to day and help those kids out so much and be a source of, of enjoyment and, and all these things and not to put pressure on you. Um, you don't want to do that, but um, just know that you can, you're doing so much already. And if you do a little bit more, that is phenomenal. And do not be stressed about controlling everything because you simply can't, you're one person, but you can do your part and you need to be okay with that and excited about that and happy that you can do that. And that will drive change in the future. Certainly um, get a bigger cup. This is the last one. Stress is stress. If your cup is full from lack of sleep, from low calories, mental fatigue, three cups of coffee, or one huge one, your cup is already full. You have a ton of stress for your day to day. Is a crazy intense workout that is going to be physically stressful. 
going to be the best thing possible. If you ever guys hear us rag on CrossFit, sometimes it's because of this. Now, obviously, there's the mental escape. There's things like that. That is very, very important. That makes our stress levels actually go down. But there's a certain point where too much exercise and even these things that are good stressors, it makes our cup overflow. And then we, our brain is cleared out, but our physiological stress cup is completely full. And guess what? That feedback loop is coming. Then we're going to get mood swings. We're going to get um, swings. We're going to get these crazy cravings, stuff like that. We're going to get hormonal resistance. We're going to get hypothyroid all that wonderful thing that we do not want um, because of this crazy stress response. So yes, exercise, things like that, appropriate, good. Um, however, they can become a big issue. Um, identify when your cup is getting full is a big piece, um, which is a skill. That's something that takes time to develop, but we have that kind of list of stressors. Hopefully you guys are learning these stressors for your day to day, whether it's the stimulus in the morning and, and it takes some time working with these. You'll notice over the next six months, you'll get better and better at identifying these things and going like, wow, when I do reduce that coffee or the, the afternoon, you know, monster or whatever it is. And, or if I sleep a little bit better, man, that, that my decision-making ability does go up or my sleep does get better the next night, things of that nature. Take some time to work with these things. Um, but that is a skill to identify um, when your cup is getting full throughout the day-to-day. -day. And stress builds and builds. It's, it sometimes doesn't happen all at once. And the symptoms may not appear until something breaks, aka the cup spills. Um, so we can take stress out of our cup and keep the level down. But the best defense is to increase the size of our cup. Now, we talked about feedback loops. So much of stress um, seems physiological or psychological, um, but we really underestimate the physiological component. So a lot of stress up here, it's psychological and that, you know, that's where we kind of feel it, but there's a lot of it. Like we said, the feedback loops, that is a physiological, that is the structures within our body, the receptors, our muscle, things of that nature. Um, so what if our body was physiologically equipped to handle large amounts of stress? We had this bigger cup because our machinery and things in our body was bigger and more equipped. Do you think that would impact our ability to handle stress psychologically? Absolutely. So increasing the size of your cup, that means metabolic flexibility. So that talks about your diet. I mean, you guys have no idea what I just said or what that means. Um, we can talk about that later, but really it just means, you know, having um, really good sensitivity to insulin, which again, just is eating a balanced diet, things of that nature. I hate saying balanced diet because our government has completely perverted that idea. Um, and then muscle, a lot of muscle is a huge ability to handle stress. If you ever notice that people that work out all the time and they're, they're really strong and it's like, man, how, how come they don't get as stressed as I do sometimes? One, they have a, a heavy routine, have a ritual, but their machinery in their body is better equipped to be able to handle stress. That's just a fact. Um, and then the nervous system response to doing strength training, not cardiovascular training, strength training um, actually trains our nervous system. To where you know we have this huge response from strength training and we build up to that um you know over, over the course of a couple of years but even just instantly um that that 48 hour adaptation that's where you know i've made the argument many times that just you know exercise even if it's not a great programming or whatever you're doing a little bit of strength training just acutely it can be a huge deal we actually talked with a, the clinical psychologist uh, from Hopewell about that, working with their patients with designing some strength training stuff for their for their psychiatric patients um, to give them the space because I mean that stuff is it's so so good. Commercial time, Jim Geeks Radio. I'm in my podcast studio right now. If you guys uh, want anything to do with health, fitness, wellness, um, living your best life, um, then Apple, Google, Spotify had to head in there. Um, but this is basically what I'm doing right now. This you know what we're, our podcasts are very very short. Um, to the point, you know, 20, 30 minutes, um, something you listen on the way on your way to work um, and get all the skills that you need. And it's not just about how to get big and jacked. Actually, I don't think we ever talk about that. It's about health optimization, optimizing your life so you can have um, a great day to day. And whatever it is that you love, you love to golf. We want you to be able to golf to the best of your abilities and get maximum enjoy, enjoyment out of that. If you love to teach, whatever it is, we want you um, to be able to do that as best as possible. And I promise the sound is a lot better than what we got going on here today. Um, but had to throw our commercial in there. Now we're going to look at quick and simple stress reduction strategy, and then we're going to get the long-term ones, and we're going to have a surprise for you then, and we will be done. So quick and simple. 
Again, I, I took a muscle centric medicine workshop, got to meet some Navy SEALs, talk with them. And one of the things they talked about was moving off the X. So when they're in battle, when somebody gets shot, you know, these are operators, these guys that are like doing the stuff in the movies. They said, you know, basically when somebody gets shot, the first thing is move off the X is get away from that place where you just got hit when things are going on get out of the situation. Um, so when we talk about move off the X, that is the thing. That is what we're talking about. So first quick and simple stress reduction strategy is deep breathing. Not just any deep breathing, but it is deep breathing. And again, I told you it was going to be something super simple that we would say, well, that doesn't really work. I mean, you know, I, I got all this stuff going on. I'm so, so stressed. But um, you literally have receptors inside your nostrils, inside your sinus cavities um, that are uh, parasympathetic. And you have sympathetic uh, uh, receptors in our throat and in our mouth that whenever air passes over them, it tells our body to get excited. So if you have a stuffy nose and you feel stressed, that's why. If you don't breathe through your nose or if you have feedback loop coming the other way, causes you to mouth breathe a lot, you're going to be very stressed. So there's a lot of things going on there. And plus, we talked about the structural thing with the ranges of motion, with our diaphragm, with our ribs. Um, deep breathing, two times the amount of seconds out as you come in. Now, as long as possible is going to be um, your your key, but then you can control that feedback loop. And what you're going to do is you're going to create mental space. Now, the cadence is important and it has to be nasal. Cover your mouth if you have to do this, but it has to come through your nose um, again, because like I said, with those receptors, so breathing through your nose, if you breathe in four seconds, we want to shoot for about a 10 second breath. Um, you'll find if everybody would just try that right now, try nasal breathing um, right now, try to breathe in for 10 seconds. You're not going to be able to. It'll take one because your stress level is about here and you don't even know it because it's your new normal. Um, yeah, but that just surprised you. Um, you thought, oh, yeah, I'm relaxed on a nice Saturday morning. No, you're not. Your stress level is at a baseline that is just your normal. So um, we're going to bring that down. It'll take four or five, six breaths trying to get to 10 before you get to a 10, eight second breath. Or if you just don't have that range of motion, you're going to feel like right here, it's going to be tough to do that. But if you do 10 seconds in, it needs to be 20 seconds out. If you do four seconds in, it needs to be eight seconds out. And if you can hold it in the middle, so if we breathe in, again, through your nose only, and we hold it for about three, four seconds, however long that you you breathe in for, if you breathe in for 10 seconds, hold it for 10 seconds, and then out double. If you do that a couple times, what you just did is you created mental space to move on down the line here to these next couple of steps. So you, you can't, again, if you have the decision fatigue, if the lion is chasing you, proverbial lion is chasing you in your mind, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do to reduce your stress and perform and thrive and survive in your job, in your environment, whatever is stressing you out right now, make the best possible decision. Um, so deep breathe, that just needs to be instant. Anytime you feel that stress response and you learn to identify that, do that breathing technique twice as long out as you come in and as, in as long as possible and a breath hold at the top. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to move off the X. So you're not going to have that decision anxiety because you're going to find one to three things that you can accomplish in 15 minutes or less. Or if something is going on, you're going to look for the one thing that you can do immediately to alter the situation, to change the situation, to make it a little bit better. Um, you know, so, but you can't do that if you're stressed, if you don't do number one, you're not going to do a very good job of that. Things might get worse and you're actually just going to get more and more stress as you go along. So deep breathe, move off the X, make something happen or do one. If you're, if it's a very calm situation and you're just getting a little overwhelmed, knock out one to three things, do something or take a break. What do you have to do? But do one to three things you can accomplish in a few minutes and you will feel better if you're less, less overwhelmed. Now, the third one is pause. Recognize the situation is non-threatening. There isn't actually a lion in the room unless there's any lion tamers on here, which would be super cool. However, most of you are teachers or, or, or workers of some sort where at your job, there's not immediate danger. You're not going to die from your stress, and but your body doesn't know that. So you have to, again, feedback loop. We need to remind it of that. So we need to think like, okay, yes, my boss just came in and yelled at me. Yes, this kid just acted out and I'm a little bit emotional about it, whatever. But how is that going to affect my ability to thrive and survive? It's probably not. And if there is, I'm going to take responsibility and ownership for it so that I can do it very, very well. So um, pause, organize your tasks and proceed. And that's another thing. When things happen, get a little bit out of order, they're inefficient. Again, that's stressful on our body. So we need to take the time to deep breathe, move off the X, get some mental space, get some space there and go, okay, the situation is not threatening to my life, obviously. And it doesn't feel good doing this. You feel like an idiot. 
I feel like an idiot every single day when I do it. But eventually, it feels so good to be able to do this. You're like, heck, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to do this every single time. Um, but you have to if you have to convince yourself that you have to do it. Um, and, but pause, recognize it. Okay, not stressful. I know, you know, a butthead boss just came in, yelled at me, made me really stressed. I'm going to deep breathe. Okay, now my cortisol levels are actually back down to baseline. I'm normal. I need to do these one or three things. All right, now let's, let's think for a second. Let's organize my tasks. You know, maybe that just changed my whole day to day. Let's take five minutes, organize it. That way I'm not all day. My brain's going, what's coming next? What's coming next? What are you? And when we're organized, it knows where we're going. That is very, very important. And then recognize your role. Control what you can and do it best. You know, we talked about taking responsibility and ownership. Control what you can. Do it to the best of your ability. And because you can't perform under stress, all the things that came before that are very, very important. So whatever tasks you just organize, whatever things you just knocked out, control what you can, do your best at it and be okay with that. Because if you're not okay with it, guess what? You're not going to do your best. And that's going to be much worse than had you just done your best. But you can't do your best if you're stressed. You should put that on a t-shirt or a cup, a giant coffee cup. <laughs> and then repeat. Yeah, I do this every five minutes some days, literally every five minutes. I just because I've let all the little things go and they've built up and I have decision anxiety and all these things going on. And maybe I did drink this giant cup of coffee in the morning. I realized and I screwed myself, set myself up for failure. I didn't pack my food with me. I didn't pack my workout clothes. I forgot to do programming for a client before. They're coming in two hours. Oh, my gosh. I got all this stuff to do. And but I also all the other stuff, blah, blah, blah. It goes crazy. I deep breathe move off the X, I pause, recognize my role, get back at it. About 15 minutes later, I'm stressed out again. And then I deep breathe, move off the X, pause, recognize your role. And just it it's all day. Sometimes I'll do it once a week. It just depends. But this is a quick and simple stress reduction strategy. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I'm going to post it in the group and send it to everybody. For those of you watching on the website and YouTube, um, you know, that aren't in the Facebook group, can't participate in those things. We're going to send you all this stuff via your email. I, actually, everybody's going to get um, So long-term, this is the last one, long-term habitual stress reduction. Keep your cup empty to begin with. So this quick stress reduction is great. We can knock it down. We can um, just really, really quick in the moment, whatever happens. But it'd be a lot better if that wasn't an issue in the first place because our cup was completely empty or bigger. So identify Right now, if you, you want to do it on your phone or whatever, identify one to three systemic stressors. What do you do every single day that causes stress or allows stress to happen? What are the guarantee right now you can think of one to three things if you're really honest with yourself? Me, it's not filling up my water bottle. Why is that stressful? Because then I want I don't get I don't get hydrated. Two, I'm in the health and fitness space. I'm supposed to be the guy that is perfect with his health all the time. And then I put this mental pressure on myself that I'm not doing my job or not doing what I'm supposed to. And I get stressed about it. And I think that the rest of my day, I'm not doing a very good job because of whatever. And it just snowballs a little bit. It's literally filling up my water bottle, always having, I bought myself a gym bag, preparing or taking my stuff with me to work because it was such a hassle. Carrying it all out the door was a stressor. So I just didn't do it. And then I wasn't prepared. So I bought a gym bag. And boom, stress levels went down. It sounds ridiculous. I bought a water bottle and I bought a gym bag and it changed my life. So I'm sure there's something because you probably do stuff way more important and significant than I do uh, that you can knock out um, one to three systemic stressors, things that happen every single day. Fix the sink or fix the well, not the sink. I don't want to say that backwards. Fix the well, not the sink. If you got a squeaky sink or drip or whatever's going on, you're not getting water to it. Fix the well, not the sink. And the number two, prepare your habits and your support system. Pack a bag, fill that bottle, even if you don't need it. I'm not going anywhere tomorrow, right? I'm not I'm not going to be out and about. I don't need a water bottle. Fill it up every single time, every single day. Find those things that you can do that's going to help you if chaos does not ensue. Because here's the thing, we don't plan for stress. Sometimes we can, but most things that happen that get us out of whack, we don't plan for it. So plan for it regardless. Um, and again, you may feel really silly on Saturday night packing your gym bag or something like that. Um, that will, you know, help you. You're not going to get to the gym tomorrow. Why would you pack it? Well, what if you do? What if a friend comes over and all of a sudden they're like, hey, you want to go work out? Uh, obviously, very silly example, but things of that nature. Pack it, make it happen, prepare. Um, and then your habits, things of that nature will start to fall in line. It'll make things a little bit easier and you'll start to develop a stressless life, a, a life that is not as stressful. Um, and then even if you don't need to, Set up your safety net. Your safety net 
is very, very important. And we talked about that a minute ago. Find, you know, figure it out. Take That takes a little bit of planning. Again, this is a long-term stress reduction, habitual stress reduction strategy. Um, you know, we need to have that safety net in place before we need it because if you're falling, it's going to be really hard to rig up a safety net while you're falling. Probably going to be a lot more focused on not dying at that point. Um, physical resilience, make the feedback loop stronger. We talked about the muscle and things of that nature. CO2 tolerance, divers, free divers, people that hold their breath and dive down for a mile or whatever, they pretty much don't get stressed um, or they have psychological issues, in, uh, which I would think you would have to, to do that. But um, CO2 tolerance, CO2 is something that, again, feedback loops, stressors, things in our brain. When we have very, very low tolerance to CO2, one, because our, we take short, choppy breaths all the time, we never deep breath in and hold it, feel that burning sensation. You know, when you build up, you can build up tolerance to that to the point where it's not a big issue. Now, I just read a, a paper I won't bore you with about that. And it was, was mind blowing, super, super good research just came out on that. So CO2 tolerance, getting in better shape. That's what that boils down to. Again, of course, I'm going to tell you, you suppose, yeah, the gym, whatever. I'm just telling you CO2 tolerance plays a big role in your physical resilience to stress, a physiological resilience that can activate that feedback, feedback loop in a positive way. HPA axis dysregulation. You probably don't know what that is. Hypothal hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. If you've ever heard of adrenal fatigue, which isn't a real thing, HPA axis is what they are referring to, which is just your sleep, your breathing, stimulants, light, all those things, this re this regulation of our hormones, everything is supposed to be this beautiful symphony and it turns into chaos because we have the sleep all jacked up if we're playing its own tune, not doing not at the right time. Our breathing patterns and practices are not in place. We have too many stimulants that are sending things the wrong direction our light environment which is that that blue light and all those things is an issue um, and then the last one is removing inflammatory foods this is massive this is so big apart from exercising building the range of motion literally of our breathing and and getting better co2 tolerance the physical part here remove inflammatory foods omega-6 fatty acids soybean oil canola oil grapeseed oil good lord it's awful for you Omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. You probably all heard, oh, we need more omega-3s. No, we don't. We do not need, yes, it would help. We need a ton less of omega-6s because your balloon is only this big in your cell of how much omega-6 or omega fatty acids that you can fit in it. It is completely full of omega-6s. It doesn't matter how much omega-3 that you eat. It's already full. It doesn't matter. So you have to remove those. And the thing is, our, our ideal ratio of human beings omega-6 omega-3 fatty acids because one's pro one's anti is one to one then they're in perfect balance our body is perfectly healthy that's our immune system um, again stress cortisol insulin all that stuff can mess with that but these uh am inflammatory foods um what they do is most of us walk around between 25 to 1 to 100 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 we are a hundred times or what is that ten thousand percent more inflamed than we should be from our diet alone let alone the stress the chemicals the sugar uh the undigestible foods that's another big thing the digestion is a big big piece um Again, feedback loop. If it's an inflamed gut, you're going to have an inflamed brain. Um, sugar messes with the insulin, which messes with the cortisol and our ability to handle stress, all the chemicals and, and sugar-free foods. Oh, yeah, those are so wonderful. One thing to know, the chemicals are just as bad. Um, it's more of the load and the amount that we eat. So um, remove those inflammatory foods. Now, oh, my gosh, there's so much stuff. What do we do? We eat whole foods. And that, that's it. That's all you have to do. I've had so many people, um, you know, that, that I've worked with and they're like, oh, I got so much. I don't know what to do with my diet. Do I do keto? Do I do no sugar? Do I do this? And it's like eat whole foods. And then we talk about all this complex stuff. I could do a whole PowerPoint, a whole talk on all this stuff. And uh, I could get this super complex topic and like, man, that's kind of tough. I don't really have the knowledge to be able to, to put that into my day to day. And then we really break it down what it looks like every single time it comes back to eating whole foods. If, if you want, if you're interested in weight loss or anything like that, start switching to whole food diet, your, your hunger regulation systems and your body and your brain and all these things and your stress levels and everything will line up. There's a lot more to that picture, but that is a massive piece. And it's a first step that you can't skip. If you do, guess what? You may make progress, but you're going to be doomed to fail in the future. I hope not, but um, that's typically what happens, unfortunately. So that's it. We're going to go through this. I'm going to look at those real quick. Um, 
deep breathe, move off the X, pause, recognize, roll, and repeat as many times as you need to. Quick, quick and simple stress reduction for in the moment. Um, and the long-term habitual stress reduction. Identify those systemic stressors when you have the space, you know, Saturday morning maybe. Um, fix, the, fix the well, not the sink. Prepare uh, for your day even when you don't have to. That will turn into habits and then find your support system. Physical resilience, so getting in shape and stuff, um, that's very, very important. Um, HPA access regulation, so your sleep, your stimulus, and your blue light, um, which are all very, very, very related. Um, when you help one, it's going to help the other. And then remove your inflammatory foods, um, which we just talked about. Just eat a whole food diet. Done. Not a plant-based diet, a whole food diet. You guys Plant-based is awesome, especially for you to do it for moral reasons. Um, that's great. But when you talk about the science, just, you know, plain black and white. Um, actually, the American diet, I saw a study yesterday, is 90% plant-based. So um, all of your French fries and your soybean oil, um, you can eat nothing but French fries and soybean oil and be 100% vegetarian. So um, not going to be very good for you, extremely pro-inflammatory. So actually, yeah, 90% of the American diet, the most unhealthy diet we could possibly think of for human physiology is plant-based 90 percent of it um so plants aren't the issue but um that's it so post workshop this is what we've been doing to you first of all you guys have listened to me talk for an hour and 10 minutes i don't know anybody in their right mind um that would do that um so thank you so much i hope that was valuable to you and i didn't just waste your time if i did you can come throw a rock at me um on main street um that's totally fine i will accept that however we want to know um as you see here you probably feel right now hopefully if you can give me a thumbs up, if this is true, um, a little, uh, little bit more equipped, a little bit more aware, at least of, of things that you are able to do. Maybe you took maybe just one or two skills away, um, from that. Um, in that case, that's really great right now, but Monday is coming when we get back in those habits and things like that. Um, uh, something we didn't touch on that we want to talk about, like you may have a great summer, and then it's like, man, I, I formed all these healthy habits. And then whenever we thank you very much, Rachel, um, whenever we go back into the school year, all of a sudden it's like, you know, we pick back up in that environment. So instantly, I, actually right now, uh, talking about being grateful for your stress, it provides you a space to change. So like if you have a typically stressful work environment, again, talking about the teachers and everything just changed, guess what? You have a new environment and because you have a new environment. You don't have any habits in that environment yet. So you have a golden opportunity to be able to uh, uh, create uh, some some habits and things of that nature that are going to be very, very helpful for you. So that is wonderful, wonderful um, to to be able to do that. Even though it's stressful, we can be grateful for that stress. It's something we can talk about because I'll talk about that for hours. Um, however, um, hope you're feeling great. Monday is coming. Thing, you know, crap is going to hit the fan Monday morning, certainly. Um, so we want to do want to know what we can um, do to offer continued support. Um, something I thought about, you know, I'm sure some of you are like, well, obviously I want to get in better shape. You know, things are really tough. Well, first of all, I'm going to say if you're going back to school right now, things are stressful. Now is not the time to start working out. Um, why? Because I'm not going to talk about it because I'll get, get here for hours. However, um, maybe kind of funny hear me say that, that right now you shouldn't start working out because it's a really stressful time. But learning new tasks, remember, is stressful. And we don't want you to have a negative association. We don't want exercise to be the thing that every single day makes your cup overflow. Because what's going to happen is give you a negative connotation and association with exercise. Remember the anxiety piece? That's going to create that anxiety around exercise. We don't want that at all. We want it to be a comfortable, uh, uh, enjoyable, something that you look forward to that adds value to your life. It will add value, but if it's physically or mentally stressful because you're learning these complex tasks or these things or whatever, that can be really hard. So um, something I thought about is just on the group here, if you guys want to do something, I would be ecstatic to drive to Meg's or wherever uh, central location at 5 a.m. in the morning and take you guys through a workout or something like that. Um, can't do it for forever because you know we're, we're very busy. We usually work 60, 70 hours a week. However, uh, if you want to do that a couple of weeks or we can do something and then get it started. Um, that is certainly an option um, and can offer continued support online that's much more efficient as well. Um, and then also, if you guys want to practice um, some of your stress reduction strategies or you have more questions, if you think of questions throughout the day, you can leave them in the group. And I will be happy to, to respond to those via um, this platform right here. Um, maybe we can do that uh, for a couple weeks or whatever but um think on that if there's anything you know, we're going to do something regardless whether it comes out of my brain or from you guys i would much rather it come from uh you all than myself because you know you better than you but um think about something that we could do to help you 
absolutely anything. Again, like I said, we really only started doing this for our educators. We're very, very grateful for you. Um, and we want to support you to be able to do uh, your job and, and you really kick this school year off as best as possible so you can build those good habits and stuff. And this can be a more seamless experience and you can provide what you only you can um, to, to our children. I uh, think that is it. Yeah, thank you. So uh, you guys, if you have any questions, you can send in uh, those. And uh, for the giveaway, uh, after the live stream, you got to post uh, two quotes, two things that you learned. Um, it doesn't have to be a quote, direct quote or whatever, but write down, just just comment on, the, on this post, the giveaway post, um, just two things that you took away um, from the workshop. And here's my commercial here for doing that, all the great stuff that we offer. However, Thank you guys so much for watching and, and we're going to follow up um, real quick here uh, and in the future again to, to give you guys continued sp support at least for a couple weeks. It may extend out five, six weeks, um, depending how that looks. But we would love to help, love to do something. So if you think of something that we can do, uh, if you're like, man, I don't, I really I need a, a, a structure, something that I can do. What are some of those habits that I can prepare um, my day to day on what are some of those uh, when we look at those long term stress reduction strategies, where do I look um, for those or, or we're talking about going through a breathing practice? When do I implement that? How can I make that more habitual? It's so hard to to learn how to do that. You know, we can do stuff like that as a group together, um, things of that nature. So send those into the group if you're watching um, via YouTube or uh, um through our website. Uh, if you guys don't have you, uh, Facebook, then you can send those to me via email or just respond to one of the emails you get after um, after that. So thank you very much, uh, Rachel. We're very, very grateful to be able to help out um, anybody with, with, again, information that's helped me so, so much that so we are grateful to be able to give that back to to people who are making a huge difference um, in our community every single day. You guys doing the dirty work. Um, so. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to hang out on here for about 45 more seconds if you just happen to have any questions um, right now. But otherwise, we're going to get out of here. Um, and again, make sure you send in your quotes, uh, leave them on the giveaway post, or you can leave it on the live stream. Um, we, we're giving away River Roasters, free stuff um, from, from the gym, uh, free memberships, all that stuff. And um, again, like I said, would love to do something with everybody for continued support in the future via this group. Um, also, oh yeah, last thing, I done kicked everybody off. Um, invite your coworkers to this. If you thought this was valuable, um, tag them in the comments or, or invite them to the group, whatever you got to do. Um, it seems like we could be giving away a million dollars and people would be like, eh, it's not worth my time. But if your friend tells you, hey, I did, I watched this, it was helpful to me. Um, it's just like instant, it's a no brainer there. So um, just because we're a business, it sometimes it turns people off. So um, invite some people to the group. And if you, again, if you were felt like you got a lot of benefit from this, um, invite people to like our Facebook page. That is the you know, very, very helpful to us. Again, getting a recommendation from the friend is number one. So invite your coworkers to the group. If you thought it was valuable, tell them to watch it. Um, and again, be happy to interact with you guys for the next couple of weeks. And if you don't have any other questions, uh, we're going to get out of here and we greatly, greatly appreciate everybody sticking with us for an hour and 15 minutes. You know, anybody I want to spend that amount of time. Um, but on behalf of Uplift Fitness, myself and uh, Jim Geeks Radio, our podcast, um, thank you all so much for, for being with us here on Saturday morning. And we'll see you very soon.